Lampton Kent Middlesex. Congratulations, here, here. thank you. Here, here. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker, uh, for recognizing me. It's an honor to be here to be here in this house after 20 years of serving, or after 20 years uh, when I served as a legislative page. It's amazing, uh, amazing uh, how fast time flies. I wanted to take a moment to offer my most sincere congratulations uh, to our speaker on his recent election as speaker. Indeed, with the first minority government in a generation, thanks to him for offering to let his name stand and accepting the challenges, challenges that our minority government will present. Allow me to also offer my thanks, congratulations, and appreciation to former Lambton Kent Middlesex MPP Maria Van Bommel. <laughs> Ms. Van Bommel is a friendly and active member of our community and served the residents of Lambton Kent Middlesex to the best of her abil ability for nearly eight years. During this time, she served in important roles as Parliamentary Assistant to the Minister of Agriculture and Parliamentary Assistant to the Minister of Children and Youth Services. I thank her for her service and thank her for her commitment to the residents of Lambton Kent Middlesex. And speaking of campaigning, I must express my thanks to those who volunteered and worked on my recent and previous campaign. Allow me to recognize my riding president and campaign chair, Mr. John Fraser, my campaign managers, Mr. Joshua Workman and Mr. Don Adams, my campaign CFO, Jennifer Grover, and my campaign advisors, Peter Twinstra, David Crone, Henry Wiersma, Rick DeVolder, Bill Graham, Betty Ann and Jack McKinnon, Jack Bernaski, Eileen McCoy, and the other volunteers, activists, donors, and members of our riding association. Without their efforts and help, I would not be standing here today as the MPP for the great riding of Lambton Kent Middlesex. Here, here. But most of all, I want to take time to thank my wonderful and loving wife, Kate Bartz, for all of her support over the years and for her assistance in helping make this dream a reality. Kate is my best friend, my best advisor, and my strongest supporter. Here. The great riding of Lambton Kent Middlesex is unique and diverse and is located west of London. This rural riding in southwestern Ontario runs from Lake Huron in the northwest to the Thames River in the southeast and Lake St. Clair in the southwest. As one of the largest ridings in southern Ontario, it contains the towns of Strathroy, Wallaceburg, southwest Middlesex, Lambton Shores, North Middlesex, Luke and Bidolph, Middlesex Centre, Brook Elvingston, Don Euphemia, Warwick, and my great hometown, the village of Newbury. A portion of the city of Chatham-Kent, lying northwest of the Thames River, also falls within the riding. It contains several native reserves, including the Chippewas of the Thames, Kettle Point, Walpoo Island, and Oneida. Lambton-Kent Middlesex is home to many small businesses, many family-owned for almost 100 years. The major source of employment is in the manufacturing sector, followed closely by agriculture. Indeed, I am very blessed and humbled to have been elected to represent such a diverse riding and a diverse group of people. And represent them is exactly what I intend on doing. You see, residents of my riding, like all ridings in Ontario, have been extremely hard hit by the current economic challenges facing Ontario. With regular plant closings, job losses, and other announcements continuing, many families in Lambton Kent Middlesex are having trouble making ends meet. Residents of Lambton Kent Middlesex have sent me here to be their voice and their representative here in this house. They have sent me to bring solutions from home to Queen's Park, and they have sent me to make positive change to affect the lives of many in my great riding. They elected me to stand up for our three hospitals, Four Counties Health Services in Newbury, Sydenham Hospital in Wallaceburg, and Strathroy Middlesex General Hospital in Strathroy. I am proud to represent the people in my riding people who work hard, pay their taxes, play by the rules, and contribute to their communities they love. Standing today and delivering my inaugural speech to this House is an honour, but it is more of an honour to represent the great people and great families of my riding. Although today is my maiden speech to this House, I would like to provide some comments and feedback on the recent speech from the throne and its content. You see, Mr. Speaker, I am extremely concerned that the recent speech from the throne Dalton McGuinty's speech from the throne has failed to address both Ontario's job crisis and Ontario's debt and spending crisis. Since the election alone, 
Our provincial deficit has increased by a staggering $1 billion. Indeed, with this speech, Premier McGuinty is adding $2.5 billion in new government spending to our growing deficit. As you will also know, Ontario families reduced the governing Liberals from a majority down to a minority while sending an expanded PC caucus to Queen's Park to stand up for these priorities, to stand up for the priorities of everyday families, to stand up for the priorities of families in my riding of Lambton, Kent, Middlesex and throughout Ontario. It is a job that I am proud to have and a job that needs doing. You see, Mr. Speaker, it is vital for the health and welfare of our great province that we reduce spending, reduce the deficit, pay down our debt, and begin to grow Ontario's economy again. Ontario was once the engine of our great Confederacy, the driver for all of Canada, but of course, those days are not here at the present. But all hope is not lost and can't be lost. We can return our province to greatness. Mr. Speaker, our party has introduced an amendment to Dalton McGuinty's speech, and as you know, we are working hard to address our jobs crisis by reforming our apprenticeship system to create 200,000 skilled trades jobs, something that will make a major impact in my riding of Lambton, Kent, Middlesex. The Ontario PC Caucus is also working hard to address Ontario's debt crisis by calling for a legislated mandatory public wage freeze. Where the voluntary wage freeze of this government has failed, we will deliver. Over the weekend, I was home in my riding and had the opportunity to speak to residents throughout Lambton, Kent, Middlesex. I told them that, unfortunately, I would be voting against the throne speech unless Dalton McGuinty supports our PC amendment to, to freeze public sector wages and create 200,000 skilled trades jobs. As a former three-term municipal councillor and now the M proud MPP from Lambton, Kent, Middlesex, I entered politics to help find solutions, to make the tough decisions, and to get Ontario back on the right track again. It will take hard work, it will take sacrifice, it will take dedication, and will not, it will not be easy, but the rewards, the prize of all of our efforts, will be exceptional and is badly needed for all of Ontario. My parents, Gary and Susan McNaughton, raised me to have a strong voice and a determination to work to improve the lives of others. We do it every day at our family business, McNaughton's in Newbury, where we proudly employ over 65 people from throughout our communities. My family has a long history of public service, from my great-grandfather, Hugh McNaughton, warden of Middlesex County, to my grandfather, John Duncan McNaughton, who is one of the founders of the Four Counties General Hospital in Newbury, to my aunt, Diane Brewer, who is the Iron Lady of Middlesex County and has served as Reeve of Newbury for over 26 years, and now myself. It is my hope, my aspiration, and my goal to serve the people, to honestly represent their wishes and desires, and work to improve and restore our great province of Ontario. My grandfather, who I never had the chance to meet as he passed away before I was born, born had a quote on the back of his business card that read, I expect to pass through this world but once. If there is any kindness or any good deed I can do for my fellow beings, let me do it now, for I may not pass this way again. These are words I intend to live by. Mr. Speaker, I thank you for the, for the time here today, and I thank the, the other members for their attention and support. Here, here.